Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. It's been about a month since I first got the ROG Ally, and so I wanted to do a follow-up video here today just to talk about my experience over this past month and what things have changed since my initial reviews. Now, before we get started, one quick caveat. This is a review unit, and so there may be some things that are different between this one and the retail releases that are coming out next week. Either way, if you've already pre-ordered the ROG Ally or you're thinking about picking one up, I'm hoping this video will be pretty helpful. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, to start, I want to talk about the shell itself and then wear and tear. Now, I have not cleaned the ROG Ally over this past month. Usually I would do something like that, but I wanted to see what it would look like, especially with that white shell, after a month of having my hands on it. And as you can see on the back, yes, there are some darker spots right here. This is specifically where I rest my finger, so it makes sense. Now, of course, an alcohol wipe will make quick work of this, but all the same, I did want to let you know that it will get a little bit dirty over time. And just to clarify here, it's not like I was eating cheeseburgers and then playing the ROG Ally. I usually keep my hands pretty clean. Now, when it comes to the shell itself and overall use, I've had zero problems with it. Like I mentioned in my reviews, when you actually are holding the device, it feels very cool in the hands. There is going to be quite a bit of heat coming out of the top of the device itself, and the center back does get a little warm, but where you actually place your hands are going to keep nice and cool. Next, let's talk a little bit about the portability and walking around with the ROG Ally. I've been using a case most of the times when I leave the house with it, and I've been using two in particular. The first one is this one. This is a TomTok Steam Deck case. I really like this one because it's form fitting and kind of thin. Now, obviously this is a little bit bigger than the ROG Ally needs, but all the same, I found that it works really well and I like the hard shell of it. It just makes it feel really well protected. Now there is an official ROG Ally one and I've seen that on Best Buy, but I don't know, I'm not a real big fan. It looks like it's a soft cover. And then also I don't like the lettering that's around the sides of it. Now, the other case I've been using, I just got from a company called Waterfield. This is a brand that makes some really high quality cases. And this one right here is also made for the Steam Deck, but they are working on a line of products for the ROG Ally. And this is a newer one. It's called their Magnetic Case. Now it costs $90, so not quite as cheap as like the TomTok one, which is 30, but all the same, this one's really neat. In addition to having these leather sides on each side, the one I got actually has a wax canvas center right here and it's got a magnetic holder. So look at that. I can just kind of open it up like that, put the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally inside and then close it up and it has a nice kind of magnetic clasp to it. Feels really satisfying. So I've been using this with the ROG Ally. This is a little bit bigger than it needs, just like the other one, but that gives you more space for things like cables and whatnot. And like I mentioned, Waterfield's working on a couple different cases. They have one called a pouch, which will just slide in and then has a zipper. And then there's another one called the City Slicker, which has like a leather flap that goes over it. Either way, when it comes to just kind of walking around the house, then yeah, obviously I don't use a case. But when I leave the house, which is pretty often with the ROG Ally, I've actually found that using one of those two cases has been really handy. And I think that's a good segue to our next section, which is me talking about the portability of the ROG Ally. And it turns out that, you know, I've got a bunch of these handheld PCs, but this is the one that I always seem to grab when I'm going to go and leave the house. And I think there's a few factors at play as to why it is that I prefer to grab the ROG Ally when I'm going out and about. Number one, I think that just the coolness in my hands is really handy. Like I don't want to hold something that's going to get really hot. For example, my GPD Win 4 is really nice and compact and portable, but all the same, if you try to push it beyond like say 15 watt TDP, it just gets really warm in the hands. And so I don't really like to have that, especially when I'm running around town. In addition, I appreciate the processor we have in the ROG Ally because I don't have to worry about whether or not a game's going to play because they all just basically play regardless. And finally, for its size, it is a very lightweight hand held and so it makes it feel a lot more portable than maybe it is just based on the size itself. And so because of that, I think those factors just eliminate some of those barriers that come from me thinking about grabbing a handheld to take on the go. And at this point, if I was to go on a quick trip and I had to choose between grabbing the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally, I'm not really sure which one I would choose between the two. I think maybe it would have to come down to battery life. And so let's talk about that one next. Now, when it comes to battery, this is probably still my biggest disappointment with the ROG Ally. This device is so good. It has that really high refresh rate screen. Everything looks really good. All the games play really well but at the same time, I just watch that battery life go down and down. And honestly, this has changed the way that I play with the ROG Ally. Number one, I don't really use it for long gaming sessions. Instead, if I've got an hour to kill, then that gives me enough room where I know I'm gonna be able to play that full solid hour without the battery dying. However, if I've got an hour and a half to kill, then it gets a little bit wonky because I won't be able to play the hardest to run games with that much battery life. Instead, I'll have to choose something that's a little bit more lightweight or I'll have to use a different device if I want 
want to play that full time with one of those harder to play games. And really that's an unfortunate thing because the ROG Ally is a device that I want to play all the time, but unfortunately because of the battery life I cannot. Now of course there are a lot of mitigations around that. For example, a battery pack that you can just plug into the ROG Ally will solve your problems right then and there. But all the same I'm trying to focus on the device itself and not a bunch of add-ons. To give you some perspective, you know I have about a dozen handheld PCs here at the house. I'm not crazy, I didn't buy all of them, most of these are review units that I keep for testing purposes. But all the same, when I have like an hour to kill in the evening time, I often will grab one of them to play. And for the past year, it has usually been the Steam Deck. However, over the past month or so, I've been grabbing the ROG Ally more than the Steam Deck, and I think that says a lot. And like I mentioned, I usually only play for like an hour at a time, and so because of that, the ROG Ally is a really great fit. And so if you're one of those people that are looking for a device where you can play it just on the go, like say for example, in between things that you have to do throughout the day, or you just have an hour to kill because you've got a busy day ahead of you, then I think the ROG Ally is a great fit in that regard. Now don't get me wrong, the Steam Deck can do that exact same thing, but for some reason, I keep Keep grabbing the ROG Ally. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that that high refresh rate will allow me to actually play games between like 40 and 60 frames per second and be super smooth. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. The variable refresh rate just kind of takes care of the rest. And so when it comes to just kind of a seamless Windows gaming experience, I've really enjoyed the ROG Ally and a lot of that has to do with that screen. I think the best way to describe my feelings about actually playing the ROG Ally is to give you an example. And this is that, you know, about two weeks ago, I ended up loaning the ROG Ally to a company. They were working on some accessories and they wanted to get the sizing exactly perfect. And so I sent it over to them and then they sent it back. There was about a week time where I did not have access to my ROG Ally. And I have to say that every single day I missed it. Like there were many times throughout the day where I'd be like, if I had the ROG Ally right now, I would be playing it. Again, this is coming from a guy with a dozen other handheld PCs. And so in that regard, when it comes to Windows gaming, like this is the one to beat. Like there's no question about it to me that if I had to get rid of all my other ones besides the Steam Deck, I would like probably be okay with that. It's just the ROG Ally is the one that I wanna keep right now. And so yes, I'm enjoying the ROG Ally a lot. And the portability part of it, you know, being able to grab it and run around the house is only one of two factors that really make me enjoy it. The second is the docked experience. Now I made a whole video about the XG Mobile external GPU setup. And in that video, I mentioned the fact that I paid about $1,100 on Amazon for the 6850 laptop GPU. And at the end of the video, I said I was gonna keep that external GPU. And yes, I did. Kind of, let me explain what happened. So number one, they dropped the price down from $1,100 to $800. And so I returned my Amazon one and then went to Best Buy and I said, hey, look, Asus is now selling it for $799. I'd like to do a price match. I had to like wheel and deal for a little bit, you know, talk to the manager, but eventually they said, okay, we'll honor that price. And so I ordered the 6850, the exact same one that I already had, but for $799, you know, saving $300. So that was pretty awesome. And it probably took maybe an hour of my time to go to the store and talk them through that and make the price match, but all the same, I was very happy with that $300 discount. But then the next day, an XG Mobile showed up at my house and I wasn't expecting that at all. What had happened was when I first got the ROG Ally, I had asked Asus to send me an XG Mobile so I could make a video about it. And at the time they said, oh, we'll look into it, but it didn't sound very promising. And so I just kind of forgot about it. Well, it turns out that they did send me one. Now they sent me the 3080 model, which to me was actually like the third best one that I would choose. The 4091, which is $2,000, is obviously gonna be the most powerful, but I thought that the 6850 did a little bit better the 3080. All the same, you know, there's a big difference between an $800 external GPU and then a test one that I get for free. And so I ended up returning the Best Buy model as well. So now I have the 3080 model. And I know that's a very roundabout way of discussing it, but I did just want to get some clarification why I'm going to be using that model in future videos and not the 6850 that I said I was going to keep. In the end, I do consider Retro Game Core to be a business. And so the $800 that I saved during that whole fiasco is going to allow me to invest in other things, you know, other handhelds and whatnot so that I can create more content for you folks. Either way, the first thing I did once I finished that XG Mobile video is I bought a stand for it. If you remember in that video, I mentioned that it has like a kickstand to it, but it doesn't look very good. And also the, you know, the device itself is just kind of sitting on its own as well. And so because of that, I wanted to come up with a solution that was more compact. After all, the reason why I wanted the XG Mobile external GPU in the first place was to be able to get rid of my desktop computer and have something much more compact. So I ended up picking up this external laptop stand 
stand. It has slots for two different laptops, it's made out of metal, and it's very sturdy. On top of that, you can adjust each of those widths, and so because of that, you have the space for the ROG Ally, but then also the XG Mobile itself. And this has been a great little solution for me. Basically, I will just leave the XG Mobile hooked up to this laptop stand, and then when I'm ready to dock this into my monitor and hook it up with my keyboard and mouse, all I have to do is just plop the ROG Ally inside, and then hook it up and turn it on. Additionally, if you just take the ROG Ally and then connect it to the XG Mobile without actually turning on the XG Mobile, it's going to charge the device as well. And so if I don't plan on actually hooking it up to the TV and whatnot, what I'll do is I'll just plug it up, and then I'll be able to charge it. It's like a docking station at that point. Now, usually I don't show this part of my work setup because it's a little bit ugly and I basically work out of a broom closet. But all the same, I wanted to show you that yes, here is my green desk that I use for a lot of my footage. And then to the left of that, I have an embarrassing amount of retro handhelds. Now these I've accumulated over the years and my top shelf right here is going to be mostly handheld PCs. And then I also have this wooden stand where it has like the device I'm working on at that time. Either way, as you can see, an entire shelf right here dedicated to a handheld PC. Sees. Below that, I have some of the cheaper or like Android and Linux based handhelds instead. And also the amount of these that I have is pretty crazy. You can imagine how often I have to spend time just charging each of these batteries up. Either way, as you can see on the right side of my middle shelf, here's the ROG Ally and the XG Mobile hookup. And as you can see, this is a pretty small space. In fact, this is where I used to have my Xbox Series S before I moved it over to the studio. And so this is a small space altogether, but I have room here for the ROG Ally as well as that laptop class GPU. And for my needs, this has been perfect. I don't do video editing on Windows, but I do a lot of tinkering and working with different apps. And so because of that, I do want something a little bit more beefy and the ROG Ally has been great in that regard. But then additionally, if I want to sit down and play a game in a higher resolution or with a better frame rate than what I can get on handheld, then I can do that right here. Now, I totally understand why people are not interested in the XG Mobile. After all, it is proprietary and super expensive and not upgradable. But all the same, for my needs right now, it is a perfect fit. I don't have a lot of space. A lot of that's my own problem for having so many dang handhelds. But all the same, I love the fact that I have an entire PC desktop setup right here on my shelf. And so in addition to the portability of the ROG Ally, you know, the ability to take it out and about, but then also, you know, play it on the couch or whatever, but then also being able to plug it into this GPU and use it at my desk as my full on Windows desktop has been awesome. And one thing I don't think I spent enough time talking about with my XG Mobile video is that there's a full SD card slot right here on the top as well. Now these full size SD cards are not as cheap as like micro SD cards. A lot of the technology has been moving in that space, but all the same, you can get a pretty good card for a fair price and then put it in here. So if you wanted to have specific games to play while docked, you could use the storage within there without having to worry about the internal storage on the ROG Ally or a micro SD card slot that you'll have with your other games. And so long story short, yes, I am happy with my XG mobile setup. It's not for everybody, but for me, it really fits. Okay, next up, let's talk a little bit about performance and updates that that have come from Asus themselves. If you've been watching any of the news that's been coming out, they've been pushing a bunch of new updates before the release. So we've seen, I think, two or three different BIOS updates, which have improved performance, but they've also made some significant improvements to the Armory Crate software, as well as their command center. Both of these are basically the Asus front end for using the ROG Ally. When it comes to the Armory Crate software itself, we haven't seen a ton of huge updates, but some of them are pretty significant. Now, initially I didn't use the Armory Crate software that much because because I was just using the Steam Deck big picture mode. But all the same, there are a few things within this that actually really caught my attention, and so I wanted to go over them really quickly right here in this video. Number one, one of the nice things about the game library tab here is that it'll incorporate all of your different gaming platforms. So not only your Steam games, but your Xbox games, GOG, Epic Game Store, all those other things that you may be using. And so that is pretty handy to be able to naturally integrate them into one single place. In addition, I really appreciate that there are per game configurations here within Armory Crate. If you press the X button while hovering over a game, it'll bring up a game profile. And within here, you can make changes that are gonna be specific to that game. For example, you could have customized key mapping or you could adjust the dead zones or the outer threshold of the analog sticks. And same thing with the analog triggers and you can adjust the vibration intensity. So if in one game you wanna have lighter vibration or no vibration, you can set all that up here within Armory Crate. Additionally, there's a configuration section and I think this is probably my favorite within here. In this one, you can do things like set up the game profile. So if you wanted to have it run in performance mode or turbo mode when you started that particular game, you could set that up right here. In addition, here you can 
adjust the LED lights on a per game basis. And so I really appreciate the customizability that we have here within Armory Crate. In addition, the recent updates to the Armory Crate and the Command Center have removed a lot of the bugs that I initially had. For example, now with Command Center, when I need to change like the power profile or the TDP, it's almost instantaneous. Same thing with wanting to change the resolution or even the refresh rate of the screen. All these happen a lot more quickly and they don't like bug out or wig out on me either. And so at this point, it's basically a seamless experience, which is exactly what I want. I honestly can't break it. Like I tried to jump in and out of it and change my adjustments and nothing seems to phase it at all. So that's a really good sign. And I think it's probably even gonna improve over time as well. Long story short, when I get a handheld PC like this and they have their own front end, I usually just kind of groan to myself because I'm like, uh, this is gonna be terrible. I'm just gonna use the Steam like big picture mode instead. But with the Armory Crate and the Command Center here, I haven't been using Steam as much as I thought I would. And one last thing to mention about the Armory Crate software is that you can sort it by different platform, and that's been really handy for me as well. That means I can browse through my Steam games and then my Xbox games. I only have one installed right now, but you can see how this will look. And then below that, I have all my different apps. So within here, I can have all of my emulators. So this has been a pretty handy way to be able to navigate between my different games and apps that I wanna launch. It's not perfect, after all, it's Windows, and so there's often times when you have to like tap on the screen or, you know, kind of just move things around. And it's all just a little bit weird feeling, but all the same, it does work a lot better than a lot of the other handheld PCs that I've tested before. Now, if you want a more seamless experience, there is one other thing that I tested and that is EmuDeck for Windows. If you've been following anything about the Steam Deck, you know that EmuDeck is probably one of the best ways that you can get emulated games onto your system. And I've done all sorts of videos about that. I've been a huge fan of EmuDeck since it first launched last year. And for a while now, the team has been working on Emu Deck for Windows. The experience here is very similar. You basically install one app, that'll go through into the internet and grab all the other emulators, download them, and then also configure them. From there, it's gonna create a bunch of different folders. You'll put your game files inside of there, and then everything will just get nicely integrated into Steam. And so if you want to use Steam Big Picture as your main launcher, this will allow you to not only be able to play your favorite Steam games, but then also you'll be able to integrate emulation just like you can on the Steam Deck. Now, Emu Deck for Windows is still in testing, so there's gonna be quite a few bugs here and there. But if you want to check it out, all you have to do is become a patron of the EmuDeck Patreon. And then from there, they'll give you access to EmuDeck for Windows and they'll push all the updates and everything else like that. So if you want to have early access to EmuDeck for Windows, I would recommend checking it out. I'll have a link down below. And I'm thinking about making two different emulation based videos for Windows. Number one is going to be just how to set up emulators in particular, but then also an EmuDeck for Windows. So let me know in the comments below if you are interested in seeing one of those videos. It might be a while before I actually get to them because I have a stack of handheld devices that I need to review. But once I get through this current crop of handhelds, then I'll start working on some more guides. Now, as we start wrapping up things here, I did want to mention one other thing about performance. I'm not really a numbers guy. You know, I'm not the person that's going to be really good at making benchmarks just because I'm relatively new to PC gaming in general. And so I'm kind of learning as I go. But I can say that the new BIOS updates have improved my gaming performance, but probably not by a ton. For example, you know, games that maybe would stutter every once in a while at 60 frames per second are now a bit more smooth, but all the same, it's not something that I consider to be like a night and day difference. So if you're more interested in checking out numbers and stuff like that, I'm gonna leave that to the experts, you know, people like the Fox. In fact, he just made a video about how to change or upgrade the SSD within the ROG Ally. So if you are thinking about upgrading the SSD from the 512 gigabytes, he's got a really good guide that just popped the other day. In the end, I found that the performance is exactly what I'm looking for. I just want something that's gonna play my games at a decent performance level. And so what I've been doing is choosing one heavy duty game, right? Right now it's Final Fantasy VII. I'm on this blister kind of pace of trying to actually beat that game before Final Fantasy 16 releases. But then from there, I put a bunch of like indie games or lightweight games because every once in a while, I don't want to play something super heavy duty, but maybe, you know, just another round of Celeste. And I think in both of those use cases, you know, lightweight PC games, which are honestly some of my favorite, but then also having a heavy duty game to focus on too has been really great. And let's be honest here, I have not been playing a lot of PC games on the ROG Ally. There's this thing called Tears of the Kingdom that came out and it's been running really well. I'm not going to show you any footage or talk about that at all because the Nintendo Ninjas are going crazy right now, but all the same, that has been working out really well too. And really, I think that's about it for this video. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible, but you know, I get a little bit long-winded. All the same, I really wanted to give you some insights about the ROG Ally and how it's been over the past month. Now, I've only really actually had it for three weeks of gameplay during that month because I sent it over to that company, but the fact that I missed it so much is what ins 
inspired me to make this video in the first place, because it's not often that I like pine for a retro handheld. After all, I've got so many of these dumb things that you would think that I would just move on to the next one. But the fact that the ROG Ally kept coming up in my mind as something I wanted to use, even when I didn't have it, said a lot. So if you are looking for that recommendation that the ROG Ally is gonna be worth it, I would say that yes, I know it's $700, I know it's expensive, there are cheaper things to get out there, you know, the Steam Deck can be $400 if you get the lowest end model, but all the same, I do think the ROG Ally is worth that price difference. Now, if they could just get some better battery performance at those lower TDPs, I would be super happy. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.